Good morning, Church. Uh, Pastor Wenzel here to encourage you today about new wine. Uh, making, positioning yourself to be able to receive the new wine of God. Uh, first of all, we need to establish what is new wine. Uh, in the Bible, let me show you my favorite book there is, uh, my road map. Um, and I, I opened, I wanted to uh, share a verse from Luke 5. I just opened my Bible and it was exactly at Luke 5 and I just felt God confirming the message for today. So I know you are going to be blessed. The Pharisees asked Jesus about fasting and Jesus doesn't answer them back, uh, tell them whether they should fast or not. But Jesus tells them a parable. He says to them uh, uh, about new and old wine. And Jesus says to them, and no one puts new wine into old wineskins, or unless the new wine will burst the wineskins and be spilled, and the wineskin will be ruined. But the new wine must be put into new wineskins, and both are preserved, and no one, having drunk the old wine, immediately desires new, for he says, the old is better. Now, Jesus is, whenever Jesus speaks, it's so rich, we can, we can have a new message from this parable every day. But the essence of what Jesus is saying is he's telling the Pharisees, look, you guys are in the old covenant. I am the new covenant. And it's important for you to take your old covenant mindset, put it away and come into the new covenant. Because those who are still in the old will not want to have something new. They say the old is better. And we know that Jesus, he says, I make all things new. And through the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, Ruach HaKodesh, Jesus makes all things new. Now, as a Christian, we can be used to tradition and the way we have done things, even theology. Uh, there are so many people, Christians, who walk around with a single theology and they, they make that the core of their life and no, not even the Holy Spirit can change their mind and bring new teaching and revelation to them because uh, they just have the attitude to say, no, <clears throat> this can't be God, this is not true, um, this is what I know, this is how it is. And, and you know, God, Jesus is warning us here. When I preach about old wine in our church, I preach wherever I travel to, I preach about old wine and new wine. I, I teach about being ready every day not relying on what I know in the past. So I honor what God does in the past. And these are the foundation. But I also understand if I'm being renewed, if I'm being made new, if God's pouring out new wine, I need to expect things I don't know. I need to expect God to do things I've never seen Him do before. Now this is the position I choose to live my Christian life. I, I can I cannot imagine God writing the Bible and saying that this is all I have done. Now you have to wait for me to come back before I do anything else. I just don't believe that. I look in the Old Testament, I see more miracles than, <laughs> than uh, New, New Testament Christians are living by today. And they, they hold on to the old. But that's so ironic. But when I look to the New Testament, and the Spirit of God and the Holy Spirit, Ruach HaKodesh, Yeshua, Jesus, my Lord, my Savior. I get so excited to see what God has done in the Bible, in His Word, because I, I just know God is not a museum. God is not just history. God is now. God is alive right now. And for us to be transformed, Jesus says, uh, the, the purpose for us believing in Him is we will be transformed into the image of Christ. This is scripture. So when I encourage our church, wherever I go to preach, I say, make sure you don't have an old wineskin. Get rid of old tradition. Get rid of old religion. 
you know how offensive some people find laughing in the spirit it's crazy to me that 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 we can <laughs> that there's such an issue with laughing i mean shouldn't we be joyful scripture says be joyful the word eporia is used it's like an explosion of joy now this is the thing jesus has given the holy spirit a mandate to prepare his bride and we are his bride making sure that you don't have old wine skin and that you don't have old wine is not a teaching whether i like it or not it's a comfort it's a warning but it's also an encouragement so take that listen to it and every day i make sure when god does something that offends me i i immediately lay that down and and you know i can go through struggles with god as well when god does something new um i need to be so close to him that i can trust him that this is god i need to understand the ways of god and this is what it's got to do new wine old wine old wine <coughs> needs to be told what to do <coughs> hold on and new wine knows what to do because it's following the holy spirit and then the words written down here are not written in stone anymore the words written in here are life and life abundant so god bless you and and i hope today you will go and, and be humble and say god i don't want any old wine in me get rid of the old wine in Jesus name. So Father, touch everyone listening to this. Let let overflow us pour out new wine into us, God. In Jesus name. Amen.